Real Enigmas and Theories is back again with another video. Before we get started uncovering these esoteric clues and messages, I'd like to welcome all the new viewers of my channel here to see my breakdowns of the show The Changeling. Here at Real Enigmas and Theories, we welcome all theories and viewpoints. Most of all, we're here to enjoy each other and the show. I started this channel back in May of this year with my theories about the show from. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. And if you have seen it and you're new to this channel, go check out my content on from so you can get a feel of how I do things around here. Okay, so let's start this off with a shout out to Tony Teflon from Teflon TV. He is who came out with the theory that Emma's third wish is to become a sorcerer. And I see that many have subscribed to his theory. And I love that because it generates more engagement to the conversation. So big shout outs to that. Even though I disagree, I do understand why one would see it that way. You have the way Emma looked at the guy in the library, her friend saying she looks like a sorceress in that picture, Michelle also saying that she was trying to tell Apollo the third wish without telling him flat out. So I see why people ride with that theory with the clues being right there on the surface. But over here, we pull out those magnifying glasses and what I see below the surface tells a different story. The same clues that make you think that her third wish was to become a witch tells me that she was already a witch. Emma was inspired to go to Brazil by the 1984 film Quilimbo. But what else did the movie inspire Emma to do? Emma told Apollo that the movie made her hun of Portuguese people just getting like, like oh! <laughs> brutally killed by slaves. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Yeah, actually, it was watching that movie that made me. What? Oh my god, you know that I just realized right this second that movies are called movies because they move. <laughs> <laughs> movies! <laughs> I haven't thought about that one. It's true. Wow. They, they do move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she didn't say what the movie made her do, she stopped for a second. I think Emma was stopping herself from slipping and telling Apollo that the movie made her want to become a witch. This happened at dinner before she told him she was going to Brazil. In the movie Quilombo, you could see the Quilombo were very spiritual people who practiced ritual magic and candomblé, the spiritual practice and edification of African orishas or deities. Candomblé is also the origin source of the wishing string or the wishing ribbon tradition practiced by many in Brazil. Don't forget that Michelle was watching those movies with Emma when they were young. And Apollo was watching that movie when he finds that postcard. The very next scene is when Emma was in Brazil. The first time they showed us her in Brazil. I pointed out a clue on this channel that nobody seemed to notice. And that was Emma seeing old blue eye twice, but only approaching her once. I pointed out in my third wish video that she had on two different shirts when we seen her in Brazil. The question would be, when did she take the photo with the Norwegian photographer, or should I say by herself when he went to pee? I mean, Michelle cut right to the chase and mentioned the photo. That was the first thing that she said to him. Then she said that Emma was looking like a sorceress in the photo. She then says that the third wish hadn't come true yet. So if the third wish was to become a witch and the third wish hasn't come true yet, then how was Emma looking like a sorceress in the picture? It's because she was already a witch and had power. Hear me out. She put the witch moves on the guy in the library and made him leave his bags and go to the bathroom peacefully. And when she was young, she put those same moves on her mother when she told her to let her go. Look at her face. And I suspect that she only accepted to go out on a date with Apollo because her magic didn't work on him. Being a fan of that movie Quilombo, I'm sure she noticed the ritual magic in the spiritual aspects of the movie. And I'm sure she was intrigued by that. And being raised by Miss Rook, the librarian, I'm sure she studied the subject a bit in the library. Also, the woman who adopted her and her sister was named Miss Rook. The Rook is a bird that's associated with alchemy and ancestral magic teaching. However, in Christian symbolism, 
The brook is associated with evil and the devil. And Emma was originally against the baptism of the baby. I also think it's funny how she also ended up working as a librarian with three other witches. And the four of them together appear to be some sort of small coven of sorts. Four witches like the Wizard of Oz with the North, East, South, and West. Or like the four witches from the movie The Craft. Look at when Emma comes back from maternity leave. She says she was feeling batshit. Now, I know that's a terminology that people use, but it's kind of weird, like, to use it in that setting. Oh, I'm clearly batshit. <laughs> oh, you will never stop crying. No. <laughs> now, bat guano is an ingredient in some witch potion, and they also focused on the carrot cake. And the carrot also has magical properties that are used in spells concerning lust and fertility. Cheryl also displayed her charming abilities on Apollo when she made him calm down. And the three witches even came to testify on the behalf of Apollo. Something else about the bat guano real quick. If you do a search for the most popular movies and TV shows tagged with the keyword bat guano, the very first result is a 1980 comedy horror movie called Witch's Brew. The movie is a remake of the novel entitled Conjure Wife. It's about three witches who use magic to further the careers of their husbands. Now, since we're talking about librarians, let's talk about Patrice, AKA the librarian of Alexandria, as it says on the bumper of his car. He also makes reference to the historic library to Apollo, in which Apollo reminds him that his wife is a librarian. Patrice goes on to say that the library was the place of the cure of the soul and how it held the world's knowledge and how the internet is that today. Now, without going all in depth about Ptolemy and all that, some believe that the burning of the library set humanity back hundreds of years in terms of technological advancement. And Patrice seems to be quite tech savvy. He obviously has access to a decent platform for selling rare books, and he was able to hack Willie and open the files that Willie forwarded to Apollo. This is also something that I noticed about Patrice. His last name is Green. In my video about Emma's third wish, I talked about a couple who lived in a Brooklyn basement apartment. They were murdered and their bodies were found in Patterson, New Jersey. And the Aleister Crowley-led cult, OTO, were suspected in the murder. I also pointed out that the book that Apollo found with the actual postcard in it was of an actual house in Patterson, New Jersey. Well, the man in that couple who lived in that basement apartment and practiced the cult magic, his last name was Howard Green. Just like Patrice Green, and they both live in basement apartments in New York City. Apollo finds a book with a postcard from Aleister Crowley in Patterson, New Jersey, where that New York City couple was found. So for me, that makes that connection even more vivid. Moreover, when Apollo finds the book containing the postcard, an Emmy statue can be seen on the table near the threshold of the door. First of all, Emmy is a phonetic brethren to the word Emma, and the statue is said to be a winged woman holding an atom and glorification of human technological advances. That supports the clues about the Library of Alexandria and technological advances. And it could also have something to do with Artemis, who is the twin sister of Apollo, with her being winged as well. I mean, why would you have a random Emmy statue in the shot? Also, the woman Alice Gee had the idea of creating her Cabbage Patch movie while she was at an exposition for the technological advancements of motion pictures in the late 1800s. I was gonna get into the lore behind the 1980s Cabbage Patch story, but I'm gonna save that for another video because I suspect something's gonna happen that even opens up more to that whole story right there. But my last video about the boiled vegetables has enough info in there to digest on the topic. But I will say this, someone in the comments I Horace 4045 mentioned how Alice Gee laid the babies on the ground in her film, Le Fay au Champ, and how Apollo lays baby Brian on the ground in the same careless manner. 
I even found that strange in my first video and I mentioned that. In Alice Gee's film, she laid three babies very rough on the ground and Apollo lays baby Brian down three times on the ground very carelessly. The writers also made a point for Emma to ask him about that. And that brings me to my thoughts on why Apollo wasn't seeing what Emma saw in baby Brian because Apollo is also a changeling. In my last video, I told you that sometimes the parents aren't even aware that they have a changeling and the changelings grow up. In most cases, they don't have many friends and they're very secluded from everybody and they stick to themselves. However, they're very loyal and close to their adopted family. Apollo refers to himself as a monster several times and often thought that that was why his father left. Apollo took the absence of his father very seriously. And when Patrice dropped that statement about starting to see why his father left, let's just say that it definitely raised my eyebrows. And I'll say this, where I'm from, you don't joke about stuff like that. Somebody would have put that baby down and been at homie's neck like a zipper on a leather coat. Or maybe Patrice knows that Apollo is the changeling. I mean, it's right there on the cover, the changeling with the picture of Apollo and his son. One more thing about Emma's third wish. The third wish, wishing to be a sorcerer, sounds a little silly to me because it just doesn't go with the other two wishes. I want a husband, I want a baby, and oh yeah, I want to be a sorceress. It just sounds kind of silly. Now, like I said, all theories are welcome, and I love it. I love having the discussion, but only time will tell. And I think in the next few episodes, we might find out from Michelle what that third wish was. Just something to think about while we wait on the next episode. That's all for my video today. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.